Hey, hey, sidecar fans. Today, we're going to get stoned. Okay, that was fun. Not that kind of stone, though. Today, we're talking about scenic effects for your racetrack. Uh, as I've mentioned before, you know, part of this track I have goes up into a medieval, medieval city. There's a, a castle and obviously a stone wall involved and some other uh, elements like that. So what I'm going to show you today is, uh, you know, how we create those stone elements. Uh, there's a castle wall here. There's also a bridge element I'll talk a little bit about. But uh, essentially, we'll just show you the, um, the methods that I've used to create that and how, if you need it on your track somewhere, um, you can do it. Another thing you might notice today, my voice might be a little bit different. Um, I got a thyroid issue, which I, you know, it's under control. I take medicine for it. You know, sometimes I, I, I have these coughing, I just got over a cold, and it'll affect the way my voice sounds. It doesn't sound quite as uh, you know, scratchy as it normally does, or it just sounds a little bit different. And I noticed that when I was recording uh, some parts of these videos uh, the other day. So, yeah, you may notice that, but it's it's not the equipment, uh, it's not you, it's, it's me. Uh, but in any case, let's get started on this project. I'll show you how we do these stone walls. Okay, so what we have here is a part of the track that goes up into an old walled medieval city. And uh, we want uh, you know, them to reflect that, so we're going to need to create a wall um, in this area. So what we've used here is some of the pink foam. I think this is about a, uh, about a half inch, maybe an inch uh, thick of the insulation foam. And... Uh, First step is to kind of measure and cut. You have to determine, you know, where your walls are, cut the sections to fit, test fit them, and you'll uh, go around and do that. Uh, sometimes you might need a, a miter cut to make a joint, you know, at a corner. Just cut each of the sections to fit, test fit them, and then once you get them set up, you'll take the sections and lay them down, and that's where we emboss the stone texture uh, onto the wall itself. Now this is something I, I think I've demonstrated in some of the other videos. It's very simple. Uh, you can draw the pattern, the stone pattern, onto the uh, foam initially if you want. Uh, you just use a straight edge and then you, you know, incise or emboss the uh, stone or brick pattern you want onto the wall. Uh, it's a pretty simple uh, process. Uh, sometimes you can use something like even a, a, a dull like a pen tip, ballpoint pen uh, works, anything you have that's uh, not, doesn't have to be too sharp. Uh, but again, go ahead and emboss and put that pattern into the wall. Now the painting is a pretty simple process. It's uh, self-explanatory. Uh, the method I use is generally I will put a, uh, a wash or, you know, a heavy wash uh, of the background stone color you can even see a little bit of the pink going through and that's not going to uh, matter too much because again there's going to be a darker uh, wash over this to kind of highlight where the uh, joints and other textures are so you'll see that going on but we get this on uh, everywhere in the front uh, wherever you think it might show make sure you at least get it down into the joints and uh, finish that process and then we're the next for the next step which is uh, applying our wash. Here you can see that wash uh, laid on to the uh, lighter coat. It darkens it up considerably, but it will uh, bring out some of that texture and the shadows in those joints and uh, make it ready for our next step, which is dry brushing. And what do you know? Who knows why, but I didn't record any of the dry brushing for the wall sections, but I am going to demonstrate uh, how we do it and how we use it. Uh, use kind of a big fluffy brush. Uh, some guys even use a makeup brush for this. You barely use any paint on this. Use, I use a white, make sure it's a very light tone. And you know, you dab it in, get most all the paint off, and just a very, very light touch. 
you know, you go over uh, the surface that you're uh, trying to highlight. Uh, in this case, I'm doing some uh, rock work that's in the middle of the uh, track here in another section. But the process works the same whether you're doing a rock face like this, or you're doing a, a rock or stone wall, or even a brick wall. Uh, just use the lightest touch you can. And it takes time, but just um, hit the highlights and you'll see it really brings out some richness in the texture and uh, makes your wall look uh, really, really good or whatever you're working on. So here you can see with the uh, finished painting, the castle wall, this lower section has been put back in place. And uh, you get an idea what the finished product will look like. Now my goal here was not to match the exact texture we had uh, on the castle above. Uh, sometimes an older wall might exist, uh, you know, using much heavier, larger stones than the, uh, the work above it. So this would be untypical of something you might find uh, in an old medieval city. But the important thing is to kind of match the overall uh, color, you know, as best we can. If it's uh, not perfect, that's okay. But in this case, I think it turned out to be a pretty good match and when set in place, uh, works out pretty well. Uh, next, I'm going to show you uh, how we applied some of these same techniques to a uh, bridge that goes up into this section of the city and how we created that. So for this part of the project, the procedure is essentially the same as we did for the plain stone wall. Uh, the primary job here, though, is to do a lot of measuring and cutting uh, to make sure it fits because we have to leave room for that tunnel. Uh, that underpass here. Uh, this is a bridge that goes up into the you know, higher part of the city. So first section is we have to get our walls created uh, to do that and we'll need to make a template. So we're going to show you how we did that. Okay, so for the next step of what we're going to do here, if you look at this type of city wall we have in place here, well, we're going to use the same type of stonework for this <clears throat> flyover bridge to get us up there. We'll do that on both sides of the track. So our first step is to make a template because we have to, you know, figure out where our curve is, how we're going to make that, how neat, big we need to make our opening here. Uh, I've got about a little over three inches here. So obviously I'm not going to be running any big trucks or anything through here, but that's okay. I don't run those anyway. So we'll take a piece like this to help us make our template. What I've done there is just, just cut this out uh, to fit over it. Now, when we're gonna do that, we need to also figure out where our um, opening is gonna be and we'll trace our pattern here in the back and then measure off that. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is, is on the back side, I'm going to trace our pattern so I can have the curve correct here. So just reach over there. I press the, make sure the board is pressed up against the, and trace that curve. So you'll see we, we have that curve traced here because we'll need that later. Now, actually, when we make our foam, we're going to use the quarter inch insulation foam. We're going to trace this line actually down a little bit lower because there's going to be a like a cardboard stock that's going to hold, go under the track and hold the track up to fit in there. So we have that. Our next job is to kind of figure out our opening. Um, <clears throat> I punch a hole here, I can see where the top the top is. And I can do that over here as well on this side. So that shows me I have to stay below that. And actually, if I'm going to have a curve, it can only come up this far make the arch come up to about there and then come back over. So that gives me the guide I need and then I'll, I'll kind of figure this curve however I need it. 
So that's basically what I'm gonna, uh, all I need for right now. Um, my insulation board, two, I'm going to have to put two pieces together, but I'll take care of that. It's probably going to come up a little bit short, but that's okay. I'm going to have a stone pier on either side, so that's fine. So with this, I can go ahead now and figure out um, what to do with this template and get it prepped so I can cut the insulation board. All right, so what I've done here is this is the original trace line. I made under the track. I made another note here. I actually underneath the track is the line I'm going to want to incise in the foam. So I just basically made another line here that's the depth of the track. And then the top of the wall <clears throat> between the track surface and the wall, I took a compass and tried to basically trace this because this is going to be the outer, the top of the wall and that's going to follow the same curve. Now the next thing I have to do, <clears throat> so these are the sides of the tunnel. I've got to figure out how high I can come up and um, you know where I want. Now my height in the tunnel, maximum height I have is like three inches and that's that's about here. Uh, on either side um, So I will mark that although I'm not going to take it up that high obviously So I will just go ahead and we'll, we'll mark that this isn't exact that horizontal line there at least I have an idea of where I can go center of this tunnel you have nine inches here because it's the track and the board there's a border on either side so if that's nine we're going to go four and a half so this is the center so that arch the top portion of that arch is going to be here so what do i want to do here well i think what i'll do is we have two inches here if I go up a full two inches, maybe two and a quarter, that would get me to here. If I come up two and a quarter, that would get me to here. So that's where on each side of the opening I want. And then I need to come up to this arch here. So there's different ways to do that. Uh, I could find something big, probably the easiest way is find something round that I can just kind of match this um, arch here. So to do that, let's see if I can find something and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so using this, we went ahead and traced an archway cut this out there's our original cuts then we're going to go ahead and uh, test fit this and see how it works all right so we've got this cut so we're going to make a test fit see how it works and there we go so this will be our template um, for the overpass just check in the back here and make sure that it's about the right height and that looks very good. So we'll go ahead and we'll use this as a basis for this side. We'll do the same thing for the other side over here. Um, that won't, won't be as critical only because you're never going to see it. Uh, it's on the back side. Even if you're driving on the track, um, you know, you'll never see that even with a camera and car uh, view. But uh, we'll go ahead and just out of curiosity see where we're at here and then see if we're going to require another different kind of hole here but this will work this will work just fine so this will again will be the template we use so as you can see in this photo we took that template uh, placed it on our foam board cut it out and uh, created our uh, bridge uh, entrance into the upper part of the city here. 
The procedure we, we did is basically uh, the same as we used for the plain wall. Uh, we incised or embossed that pattern. Did a little more uh, decorative, as you can see, some pilasters uh, there on either side of the opening. And you'll see a, uh, uh, some other decorative items there on the top. Uh, we did have to make an adjustment. You'll see on the, uh, if you compare this to the original, the arch is a little bit flatter. We need a little bit more room on each side to ensure that we had clearance uh, there. So uh, the sides went up, the arch became just a little bit flatter. But again, uh, we're safe there as far as clearance, uh, at least for most things. You know, most cars, most wing cars, I think I measured a van can get in here, but probably not a truck. But as I mentioned, uh, you know, we don't run those anyway. Uh, so once we got this point, uh, there is just a dark wash on this now. The other thing we did here is we added on the one side, there is actually a walkway on one side. We used the uh, cobblestone pattern there uh, so that you can see that. So it's we thought it was only necessary on one side of this bridge to go up and into the city. And then once we finished with our dry brushing technique on that portion of the wall, as you can see, it uh, matches up pretty well with the other portions of the city wall we had in place. So that will uh, complete this section of the project for now. Um, hopefully this was helpful for you. You can see how we can use these uh, wall textures with the uh, insulating foam, that technique to uh, get the effect you want in the cases where uh, it might add to the uh, look of your track. So I hope they gave you some idea of uh, at least one technique you can use to create those stone walls. Uh, I used to use several different techniques. Sometimes I used to do a skim coat of uh, plaster joint compound, etch that uh, pattern into it. Uh, but I found using that pink foam, uh, the rigidity of the foam, and using just the right tool, you can get that pattern etched in there just as well. And it saves you a lot of time and effort. So, you know, I think it works pretty well. Uh, but again, if you have the need to have a stone wall, whether it's a, you know, a garden wall, a retaining wall of some kind, or, or you're using it for a structure that you're putting on your track, um, you know, it's one method you can use. So hopefully you'll find that uh, uh, useful. Okay, so here's a part of the episode where we talk about uh, some of the new cars that have uh, come into the garage. You know, do we ever stop buying slot cars? I, I don't think most of us ever do. Um, but some of the ones I've got recently are, again, some older models. I'm uh, just trying to catch up on things I never had. Uh, I did get a uh, Scalextric, a Bentley. Uh, you know, there's a lot of these cars out there still. Uh, but most of the ones I see, especially on eBay or different places, are they're like white liveries, which, you know, I find kind of boring. Um... Uh, you know, I'm looking for something different. I've seen some blue ones, but I did come across this really pretty green one, uh, which was a really nice, I, I thought, appropriate color for a, a mark like Bentley. And it's also a nice uh, match for its stable mates. I've got a couple of Carrera uh, Bentley Speed 8s, uh, Le Mans cars, uh, so it matches up with those pretty good, and I was pretty happy to get a, a, a new uh, model of that one at a pretty decent price. Another one I, I got was, uh, you know, everybody really liked, I know, that Sunoco Ferrari, the 512M that Slotted uh, put out last year. Um, years ago, uh, one of the Fly Classics, they had a Sunoco version of the 512S uh, that they put out. And I've been looking for one of those for a long time. I have another long tail, uh, you know, red Ferrari car. And I managed to find one at a very reasonable price, again, a, a brand new car. And, uh, you know, as you can see, it's, it's a really pretty looking car. And uh, I was really happy to get that. As far as new cars that just came out, well, I'm really happy to report that uh, I did get this uh, Scale Auto. Uh, this is, you know, just a, a gorgeous car. Um, you know, I love the new Le Mans cars. Uh, this new... Um, series with the uh, hyper cars and the uh, the IMSA cars as well uh, that run in GTP. Uh, they are just, you know, I, I think the competition in the series is just really awesome. 
And I do like the cars. I, I think they're uh, they're really nice looking cars, and we're going to see so many different manufacturers involved. That, you know, it's really exciting, and I, I hope, uh, you know, I would think we're seeing more and more of the, uh, you know, slot car manufacturers jumping on board to give us some more of these cars. So uh, we'll see how this one goes in the track. I'm, I expect it to be a really good performer, but uh, yeah, I was really happy to get this one and add it to the garage. As always, if you like this content, be sure to visit us at slotjournal.com, at Facebook, at slot.journal, and also on Instagram. Thanks for watching. Okay, well, here's the part of the episode where I usually talk about things I've uh, seen and heard in the internet. A couple things I wanted to talk about uh, this time around are a couple of events uh, coming up. Um, thanks to some of my uh, friends on Facebook, um, you know, I've, I've found out about a couple of events, uh, one of which I'm very familiar with, and that's the uh, Cleveland Slot Car Show that's coming up. Uh, Greg Bennett uh, is one of the organizers of this. He sent me some information. Um, this is set for April 21st, uh, so it's coming up, and it's in Richfield, Ohio, which is about uh, well, about halfway between Cleveland and Akron, uh, right off of uh, I-77, so really easy to get to. This has been a real popular show. Uh, they actually uh, take over uh, the hotel there for the whole uh, weekend. They start on Friday night. They have some uh, racing and some auctions. Uh, they also do some programs of racing on uh, Saturday and some additional uh, auctions. And then the big show itself is on Sunday. And that usually goes from like 9.30 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. Uh, it's a really good show. I've been there. Uh, was it last spring? I was in there last fall. So this will be the third time around. Uh, for those of you who collect, uh, there's a lot of HO stuff. It's always been uh, a lot of HO stuff, maybe mostly, but uh, the last uh, you know year or so, they've gotten more and more of the larger scales of 132. Um, the, as far as what's available there, I think they even have a 132 scale race set for Friday night. Um, you know, you can ask Greg. He's on Facebook about that. Uh, just in, you know, feel free to ask him. Um, but there's some really good vendors. Uh, you can get some really good deals there. Uh, I've got some in the past. I never leave unhappy. Uh, and a lot of good people, uh, a lot of real experienced people show up. And it, it is really a good show. So if you're in the region, uh, I would suggest you, uh, you know, head over that way and, uh, you know, say hi. I know I'll be there. I'll probably have some gear on. So, uh, you know, if you see me, uh, be sure to, you know, Bop me on the head and say hi. I'd love to, you know, talk to uh, some of those slot heads out there and meet you in person. Uh, you know, especially if you're somebody that I, I know, you know, one of the uh, people on some of the different uh, uh, live streams and chats and things like that. So that's it's great. But again, it's a, it's a great event. I encourage you to check it out. Uh, another event from another Facebook uh, friend is Slot Mania Brussels. Uh, Julien Guillotot, uh, again a friend on Facebook, sent me this information. Uh, I won't go talk a whole lot about this one because uh, he's sent me some information on it. Uh, there's some posters, but I have to tell you, this is, it, it's in Brussels, so obviously I won't be able to make it. But to me, this looks like it's probably one of the best organized and best promoted events uh, I've seen. Um, you know, you'll see they've got some uh, race car drivers. They actually have some of the uh, suppliers who show up. Let me look. They have uh, Shaz Racing, uh, does some uh, BLST tracks, uh, slot racing systems, uh, Marl Onco um, with having another BLST track. But the uh, Scale Auto, Slot at Polycar, Avant Slot, and Skill Electric, they'll all be present in person, represented by their uh, uh, head. Uh, so you have questions for those folks, you can, uh, you know, if you're over there in Europe near Brussels and you can attend and get some of those questions answered. Uh, they usually have some guests um, that come in to visit. I think, uh, let's see, this year they'll have Adrian Norman. And, uh, you know, they're moving maybe a little bit out of the uh, swap meet format. Uh, they still have that, of course, but they want to uh, 
something more convention-like and uh, e even better organized before. And uh, I'll just quit talking about it because what I want to do is show you this uh, promotional video they put together. So that pretty much uh, closes things out for this episode. Uh, I want to thank everybody out there who uh, subscribes if you've uh, suggested this to your friends or anybody else. Uh, you know, as I mentioned last time around, we hit 600 subscribers and we're almost halfway to 700. So uh, things are going really well for the channel and I really appreciate the support. Uh, you know, if you like this kind of, um, you know, content, you know, be sure to like and subscribe and again, uh, you know, tell your friends about it. Um, I really enjoy doing this. Uh, you know, it's one of those things, you're not going to make any money off it, but, uh, you know, it's just a way to share some of the things I've learned. And uh, we're getting pretty close to the time when I can get some cars on this track and start running them. And then we can, you know, show you some other things and talk about some other uh, subjects. But uh, for now, again, uh, we've got still lots of content, a lot of things to organize and show you. And we'll work towards doing that. So that's it for this episode. Like I said, keep that grip firmly on the trigger and be ready to step on it.